Coming up, Hazard Community and Technical College has approved a new program to train people for new jobs coming to the area. And people are relieved after two children are found safe after going missing. Plus, a special session over gun legislation in Virginia came to an end that many say is disappointing. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 532 on Wednesday, July the 10th. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. It's a little bit foggy, not as much as we saw yesterday, but it's hot. It's going to be even hotter today. So get ready for that. Let's bring Brandon in this morning. And Brandon, the key to making it through today is lots of water, Gatorade, Powerade, mm -hmm. body armor, whatever you get <laughs> to that system that keeps you sweating and keeps you cool. Exactly, because I tell you, it's just going to be one of those situations where it's going to be very hot as we head into the afternoon hours, but this morning, a little bit of fog across parts of the region. Let's take a look there at the saddle, or excuse me, let's take a look at the cameras first this morning, I'm getting ahead of myself there. UVA wise, pretty quiet overnight, not a whole lot of action going on, but again, some parts of the area is still pretty foggy. Dense fog up toward Ashland there, four miles, and then nine at Moorhead, eight over toward Williamsburg, five in Harlan. So again, not as bad as it has been, but some spots still seeing it. 69 Harlan, 68 Somerset and Monticello, 70s everywhere else. As we head through the first part of your day, temperatures across the region close to eight, almost 80 there in parts of Owensboro and out toward Paducah, 77 there in Louisville. So some warm days uh, or warm morning ahead for some of the folks out to our west. Day planner, we're going to see maybe a few clouds and some scattered chances for some storms in the heat of the day this afternoon as we get close to 90 for a daytime high. I'll have the rest of that forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Will? Alrighty, Brandon, thank you. Well, she put up a good fight against the Republican incumbent for Kentucky's 6th Congressional District in November. Now she announced she will run for office again, this time in hopes of unseating Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. We are talking about Amy McGrath. She's a retired Marine Lieutenant Colonel. Hillary Thornton has more on the announcement that is making national headlines. Amy McGrath first talking about her candidacy on MSNBC this morning, explaining why she thinks this is the year Kentucky voters will choose someone other than the longtime senator. The things that Kentuckians voted for Trump for are not being done. He's not able to get it done because of Senator McConnell. The McGrath campaign also releasing a video this morning, putting direct blame on the problems she sees in the country on Leader McConnell. Less than an hour after her announcement, Team Mitch responding. And I think the wall is stupid. Putting out what essentially is a highlight reel of the attacks used against her in her attempt to unseat Congressman Andy Barr last year. A flurry of activity today that our political editor says will likely continue. Well, the race came roaring to life today, no doubt about that. And what you'll see now is that the campaign is already in gear. And it will be interesting to see just how aggressive it will be over the months to come come and how often Kentucky will be uh, in the headlines given the high profile of this race. In Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Now, Senator McConnell has defended, has fended off six Democratic opponents during the past three decades, including now Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes in 2014. Well, a special session to combat gun violence in Virginia ended without any results, leading some lawmakers to question Governor Ralph Northam's intentions. The special session ended with the move to take no action until the State House and Senate come back into session in mid-November. The State House Speaker, a Republican, criticized Northam for the session. How the whole thing is just an election year stunt. None of the laws proposed by the governor would have stopped what happened in Virginia Beach. The special session comes less than six weeks after a gunman opened fire at a Virginia Beach municipal building, killing 12 people. Well, more than one ton of confetti is packed and ready to fall upon the World Cup champions U.S. women's soccer team. Fans of all ages will line the Canyon of Heroes in downtown Manhattan today for a ticker tape parade. Workers had to move fast to build the gold trim floats for the athletes to ride. Team USA defeated the Netherlands 2-0 on Sunday in France and are now home and celebrating in America. We feel like we've been in kind of a little bit of a bubble over in France, so now we get to feel just the magnitude of the impact that we've had here. 
With the last time the, women's won, the women won the World Cup in 2015, it was the first time New York ever held a ticker tape parade for a women's team. This time around, some of the players have used their success to fight for equal pay in the workplace and on the field. Well, Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia introduced a bill Tuesday that he is hoping will do just that. It hinges on the fact that the U.S. is set to co-host the Men's World Cup in 2026. Senator Manchin wants to cut off any federal funding for that unless the U.S. Soccer Federation agrees to pay the women's team as much as they pay the men's team. And he's not the only one speaking out. 28 members of the team filed a lawsuit accusing U.S. Soccer of institutionalized gender discrimination. Well, billionaire tycoon and two-time former presidential candidate Ross Perot has died. Perot is best known for running one of the most successful third-party presidential campaigns in 1992. He got nearly 19% of the vote as an independent, running on a campaign against NAFTA, which both Bill Clinton and George H.W. Bush supported. Perot ran for president again in 1996 under his newly created Reform Party, but only got 8% of the vote that time. Ross Perot was 89 years old. Well, since the announcement of Dash Score coming to Perry County, Hazard Community and Technical College has, appro has approved a new program. It will train students for the more than 250 jobs that are expected to become available. The Manufacturing Engineering Technician Associate of Applied Science program will provide certificates in operations management, blueprint reading, advanced manufacturing technician, and more. While only 20 slots are available, officials say they are prepared to adjust as needed. The career opportunities are endless and the entrepreneurship, whether they work for a large company, a small company, be self-employed um, locally, or if they're willing to drive a little far, farther out away from their home, it's endless opportunities. As classes began on August 19th, two new professors will be added to fill in expertise gaps. Dashcore is expected to begin operations at the end of 2019. Well, the Federal Aviation Administration awarded a $1.85 million competitive grant to the London Corbett Airport to rehabilitate the runway on McGee Field. The grant will rehabilitate nearly 6,000 feet of runway pavement that has deteriorated. It is a murder case in southern Kentucky that has resulted in a lot of questions. That murder of a young woman and her four-year-old half-brother happened 25 years ago in Pulaski County. And the victim's family is still seeking justice. WYMT's Phil Pendleton spoke to those who believe the case can be still solved. This Somerset street corner has not changed much in 25 years, just like the unease Clayton Gibson feels about the unsolved murder of his sister and her half-brother. You know, and they was murdered like, like you would. They was killed like a stray dog you would out here on the side of the street and thought no more of. Last seen leaving convenient on July 3rd, 1994, only to be discovered four days later, two miles away in a fence row. No one has been arrested because of the circumstances uh, and the people that was involved. Clayton Gibson uh, believes more than one person was responsible for the brutal murder of the two. Police believe Linda Gibson was the target, but the four-year-old saw it and was murdered because he could have identified the killer. I, to ease my mind, I just have to think that they're, they're in heaven uh, and uh, with Jesus, and, and there they can't be hurt no more. Time would indicate this is a cold case, but police say they don't see it that way. They say their detectives are always actively working on it and hopes they will get that tip to lead them to make an arrest. Even after 25 years, Gibson believes it could be as simple as a phone call from just the right person. I just wish that I wish that maybe somebody if they could have uh, maybe heard something that night or that evening uh, or saw something. Gibson says people were afraid to come forward in 1994. Possibly so many years later, those fears would ease. In Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Police say they believe the two were picked up near the Bourne Avenue store, taken somewhere and killed, then dumped in the fence road near the Village Green subdivision.
A late golden alert was issued for a London man on Tuesday. Take a look at this man, 65 year old Glenn D. Bailey. He was last seen on North Mill Street last Monday around 10 in the morning. Deputies with the Laurel County Sheriff's Office say Bailey has onset dementia and liver disease. He requires daily medication, which he does not have access to. Bailey is described as, as 5 foot 10 inches tall, 180 pounds, with gray hair and a mustache. He was last seen wearing a blue shirt, blue hat, blue gray shorts, and blue tennis shoes. Police say he might be in a red Pontiac Grand Am. If you see Bailey, please call 911. Well, police people rather are relieved in Johnson County after two missing kids were found safe. Around 1.30 yesterday afternoon, police received a call that a 17-year-old boy with special needs and his young three-year-old cousin had taken off on an ATV across the Lawrence County line. Thankfully, both children were found safe near the Sandy Hook area. It's my understanding that it was almost a Sandy Hook on the uh, four-wheeler and the Lawrence County Sheriff's Department was the ones that actually found them and got them stopped. Both kids have been reunited with their loved ones and family members say they are just thankful they are safe. The Appalachian Wireless Arena is working to bring more entertainment to the region. We'll have more details in just a few. And a cold front, yeah, I know that sounds ironic. This time of the year, we'll ramp up those chances for rain in the next 48 hours, but the break from the action will not last long. I'll have the latest forecast in about three minutes.